Well, hello, hello, hello. I don't know about you, but for me and most of the women I know, completely stressed out these days for a variety of reasons. We've got the pandemic. We've got the virus. We've got the search for the vaccine. Kids at home, working from home, craziness in the world, chaos everywhere. And of course, as women, we're the caregivers, whether it's little people, old people, you name it, we're trying to do it all and still maintain. <sighs> That's how I feel most days. In fact, you can call me on any given day of the week. I'm not going to even know what day it is. Nine times out of 10, I don't know the day. I don't know the date. I'm not by myself, but that's exactly why I invited Jessica Gurley to join me today to kind of talk through this. What is going on? How do we handle it? How do we do it? Jessica is a licensed clinical social worker mm -hmm. as well as a therapist. Yes. And I figured who else could help me figure this out but her. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm not exaggerating, am I? When I talk about all these things that we're dealing with and the fact that they can be overwhelming. It is very much so. And I think the first thing is giving yourself permission to feel all those feelings that you are feeling. And sometimes we beat ourselves up. We can be our worst enemy and tell us we should be doing this. We should be doing that. You know, working from home gives us this false um, belief that we should be working harder and we should be more motivated. but it, we have a pandemic on, you know, going on. We also have our children here. I don't think everybody wished that we could work from home with kids um, <laughs> or with the pandemics. So you have to really, really give yourself a break. And that's the first thing I tell people when they come into my office. You know, you have to really be your own cheerleader and tell yourself, you know, it's okay to not be okay. Like I usually say all the time. It's okay to not be okay. And that mm -hmm. actually makes perfect sense because, I mean, we hear about and, and we hear other people talk about this thing called pandemic fatigue, yep. but it's real, isn't it? Most I mean, familiar. we're tired of this. Right, right. There's so many things you have to think about. You know, there's so much added on your plate. Again, this um, believe that, you know, you, you somehow have some relief because most people are working from home and things like that. It's not a relief because you then can't separate um, work from, uh, you know, life and your children, like they're mm -hmm. all combined together. And if you're, you are one of those people that still have to go into the office, there's still this fear of catching this disease, you know, this virus. And so you have to worry about all those things at once. And so I tell people it's so important to write your thoughts down because they're valid, but you mm. don't want them all to continue to come to you at once. You know, our brain is used to me memorize a lot of things. So if you can do your brain a favor and write some things down so it's not repetitively saying these things to yourself, it can really be helpful because it's very overwhelming, even for us therapists. You know, this is the first time we're having this very shared experience with our clients, you know. Um, and so we're able to talk about the Zoom fatigue and we know exactly how they feel. Um, and so we're in this together and I sit with my clients. I do meditation with my clients if needed because, you know, we truly have been going through this this whole year with them. So you touched on a couple of things I, I, I want to pick up on. So the idea of writing it down, like I tell people all the time, my brain can't handle all this stuff at once. I got to get some of this stuff out of my head. And I just say that, but I, what I'm hearing you say is that's real. I can't that keep all real. this stuff in my head. Yeah, so that's legitimate. If I write it down, that's almost like getting it out of my head. Mm -hmm, literally. And sometimes I have to give somebody that, that symbolic picture for them. So I'll take a drawer and say, these are all the things you are putting in your brain right now. And it starts to overflow. Um, and so um, it's good to write it down because your brain doesn't have to remember it. But the other thing is, it's also staring right back at you. So it's really real for you at that point. Because sometimes we allow our thoughts to just wander into all these different places and we can't really organize it by having it just in our heads. But when we see it on paper, you start to think about, oh, that's what I think about. Well, where did that come from? So it gives you more clarity when you write it down because it's almost like a therapist is staring right back at you. Those thoughts are, because a lot of time as a therapist, I'm just repeating what you're saying, but clarifying and trying to give it a name, right? That, that, that thought, that feeling, I'm trying to give it a name for you 
and an importance in your life? You know, what, what, what does that thought or feeling serve for you right now at that moment? Even if it's bad, even if it's anger, you know, anger has all these different emotions under it as well. So we'll try to figure out what is the source of that anger? What was the trigger behind that? And so again, all this goes into, you know, writing things down, journaling, it can all help anybody. It doesn't matter. You don't even have to be in therapy. I would recommend you to write things down. The other thing that you mentioned, and we'll take a break after this, is this Zoom life. You know, it's like you have meetings all day, you're Zooming all day, and then your friends say, why don't we have a Zoom happy hour at seven o'clock or whatever? And there are a lot of times I'm like, I'm not trying to do another Zoom. Yeah. Sorry, guys. I've been on Zoom all day. It's like (laughs) this computer has become our world. Right. It's old after a while. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the funny thing is now I found I find people um, feeling like they shouldn't feel like they want to be with other people. And I have to remind them that as human beings, we are social. Mm -hmm. We need that social interaction. We need that social connection. Um, And so a lot of people confuse social distancing with social isolation. So we have a lot of people who feel like they should be isolated. And it's like, no, you still should be social. And I know it it would be a pain if you did like seven Zoom meetings in a day and somebody says, let's do a party Zoom. Um, But try at least try it at least every two weeks, right? And see how you feel because it might end up being a great time because that social interaction is so important. Um, And I tell people, if you don't use it, you lose it too. And I'm talking about those communication skills, those social skills. I remember when I first went out to drive, because I was one of those people that stayed home that whole month of March, or I think it was March Ah, or April. Mm -hmm. When I went outside and drove, I was like, how do you use this thing? (laughs) (laughs) Which was the guess and the break. So I want you to keep your social skills up. I want you to keep those social interactions with people and recognize that it's okay to be vulnerable and want those interactions with your friends and family and to reach out to people when you need help. You know what? I want to pick up on the the Zoom thing as well. We got to take a break, but I also want to come back because... Our kids are living in this Zoom world as well, and I wonder what it's doing to them. We'll talk about that in just a minute. When the Lynn Hayes Freeland Show continues, don't go away.